past this old house, our experts travel across the country to answer questions about your house. Today, we are going to spend the entire day working for Mark McCullough. He had an incident about a year ago. His chicken coop burned to the ground. He wanted to rebuild it, and the entire group decided we'd lend a hand. One, two, three, nice and slow, don't rush it. It's nice to have a full crew. It is, it's really good. The birds have a beautiful home now. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House, where today we are going to spend the entire day working for Mark McCullough. He had an incident about a year ago. His chicken coop burned to the ground. He wanted to rebuild it and the entire group decided we'd lend a hand. Hey, Kevin. Mark. How are you? All right. So what happened? Oh, let me tell you the story. Okay, Mark. Let's talk chicken. All right. <laughs> so I don't think most people would think of you as a chicken guy, but you are. I think uh, I have to admit that, yes, <laughs> yes. Why chickens? Uh, actually, very, very relaxing. People don't understand. They think that the chickens may be a lot of work, but literally I can have the cage cleaned. I can have the birds fed 10 minutes. And then obviously you're getting eggs? Eggs, of course. As a matter of fact, I have many neighbors on the street who enjoy the eggs as well. Uh, when people get low, they actually put egg cartons on my front porch. So that's when I know someone's in need. I'll fill them, walk them over to their house in a couple days, and they'll have fresh eggs until they put it back on my front stoop. So what happened? Tell me about the big incident. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I was sitting in my chair watching a ball game, and uh, I saw a yellow flame. And immediately ran out there to see what was going on, and by the time I got back there, it was pretty engulfed. Really? So what did you have back there that, with that lit up? Uh, we think it was an electrical thing. I did have an electrical box, a light switch out there, um, and sometimes squirrels will gnaw at the uh, wires, and that's what they think did it. And the building itself was what? It was what we call a chicken barn, yeah. and that is exactly what it was. There were two doors, one on the front, one on the back, and the birds could roam pretty freely. I had a tunnel going to their steel cage, which is where they all ended up at night. Right. So little flame becomes big flame quickly? Very quickly, a lot quicker than you would imagine. Right. Yeah, it was up. And what'd you do? Got my hose going, which I have out there to use for the chickens as well. I went in and just tried to hold that fire off uh, as much as I could before the fire department showed up. The flames were, were getting that close where my skin got a little, a little burnt, as they say, so. The fire department did show up. Um, they did ask me to leave uh, the, the metal frame as, as quickly as possible. It's, so tell me about the fire guys. What are they doing? Because I, I'm not thinking they love chickens as much as you love your chickens. Well, I got lucky in that sense. There was a fireman named Brandon who convinced me to get out of the cage. He would take my place and he guaranteed me he would remove each bird one by one by himself and there was no need for me to be in there. Really? So I took him up on the offer, I relented, he went in, and then delivered me bird by bird. So success, all right. Yeah. So you had to put them up somewhere temporarily. I did, I did. They get nervous, uh, they stop laying, uh, they know something's wrong, they're very, very comfortable when they're in their environment, but if something is amiss, they know it. So they're very aware of their surroundings. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right, so we gotta get them home. We gotta get them home. Which means that's we gotta right. get a new chicken coop built. Yeah, that's right, that's what uh, we gotta do. Well, whole gang's here to help. I so can't we're gonna wait. try to make this go fast and we're all pitch in. All right, well, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, let's get to it. All right, Kevin, so as you can see, I was lucky enough that my concrete floor survived the fire, but this time around, what I did was I put up a granite foundation Gives me more stability, gonna keep the rodents out this time. Nothing's too good for the chickens. Nothing's too good for the chickens. All right, and Tommy, it looks like uh, you've already got a jump on it. We have a jump on it. On top of Mark's granite, we placed a pressure treated sill, four by six, half lap the corners, and code says that you have to have pressure treated wood on top of masonry, and that we have. And so, how is this fastened to his granite? It's a mechanical fastener that's drilled through the PT and then into the masonry, and then when he tightens it, it locks itself right down. Beautiful. So you okay. don't have to worry about lift or slide. It's gotcha. really nice. 
Now this is pretty typical framing. You do the same kind of framing whether you're doing a house or garage or a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. It's 16 on center. We could use two by six. Don't need it because they don't have to worry about insulation values or anything like that. So two by fours in this case. Two by fours and like I said, 16 on center, not 24. And it's all marked for that. You can see that, but let's start on the outside corner and work our way in. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can make an inside or an outside corner. I just simply take two, nail them together, create an L. This is nailing for our inside corner and this is the nailing for the outside of the building. Then a king stud right here, as these are, king stud goes from X to X. In other words, it's the stud that runs from plate to plate. So bottom plate, top plate, and that's in between. So if you notice, I have marked 16 on center all the way across. But if you look right here, I have an X and an O. And the O signifies a jack stud. And we're marking them so fast, it's just easier to mark a zero. So this jack stud, goes against the king stud, nailed in nice and tight, goes all the way up here, but it's short enough to accept the height of the header, and that's so it can fit under the header and support it. And your header, is, is that a two by six or two by eight? This is a two by eight. It's two two by eights nailed together, and sandwiched in between it is a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Yep. And that does two things. It actually adds strength to the header, but it also gives the thickness to the header to make it flush on the outside and the inside of the building. Okay, and it looks like you got everything laid out, cut, so we're ready to nail. We're ready to nail. Because this building is not going to be sheathed with plywood, the siding is going to be the sheath. So to stiffen it up, we're going to let in some diagonal bracing. One, two, three, nice and slow, don't rush it. Okay, Tommy, rafters, what is the pitch of our roof? All right, Mark wants a nice steep pitch, it's 45 degrees, also known as a 12-12 pitch, which means for every 12 inches we go in on the level, we go 12 inches up plumb. Okay, it's nice to have a full crew. It is, it's really good. Okay, Mark, what do you think? Do you approve? Do I approve? I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am, Kevin. <laughs> The birds have a beautiful home now. <laughs> well, they don't have a home yet, but don't worry. Close. We're not going to leave you hanging. We're coming back. We're going to finish this. We're going to take it all the way home for them. All right. All Appreciate right. it. Roof leaks a little now, but what? we'll fix that. What? Wait, wait, <laughs> let me, all right. Let me get that on the list. Hey, Mark. You in there? Hey, Heath. What's happening? Hey, how's it going? Great. How you doing? Good. The barn is really coming along. Oh, man. Granite's in. I wouldn't expect anything less. Thank you. I actually cut this about a year ago. It's been sitting here just waiting to go up. So I'm happy as heck that it's in. It looks good. We've got siding on it. We got some trim. Yeah. Uh, roof's getting ready. Yeah. Looks like you're about ready for some electrical. I am. So the good news is you had a piece of conduit in the ground that we can reuse that was feeding the old shed that was here. So we're going to be able to utilize that and feed the new one. Okay. Um, but have you given any thoughts of what you may or may not want inside? Lights, receptacles, uh, anything in particular? Well, I want to make sure I'm code complicit. Mm -hmm. So uh, other than that, I don't want to go too much only okay. because it's for the chickens. It's chickens. You know. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do a couple of general use receptacles. We'll do some lights inside, maybe a couple outside for the doors. Yep. Uh, and then give you a little room for a possible expansion in case we, you know, have more chickens and they need more room. Well, chickens lay eggs. <laughs> so you never know, Heath. All right, I got a couple things over here. We'll go grab those and we'll get started. All right, I'll give you a hand. So since we're going to start the rough electrical, let's kind of explain what that is. You okay. might be used to it in a house if you're seeing them do a wood frame. Uh, they'll start tacking up plastic boxes, pull NM cable through, and, and get everything made up that way. That's the rough on that. When you're doing something outdoors on the outside of a building or in something like this, I like to make it 
a little tougher, a little more waterproof, and especially here where we may have rodents chewing on the cable, uh, chickens in there, we don't want to have anything damaged, and you may have to wash it down or do something at some point. I want to make sure it's watertight for you. So we're going to start by making everything outdoor rated. And the first area we're going to start is with the panel. So since we have a conduit coming in, we know we can pull conductors of a certain size in here. I don't want to just put in one circuit for lights or receptacles. I want to give you a little room to grow in case the chickens need more space, in case we want to power another building outside, maybe another shed, give it a receptacle or a light. So we're going to put in a rain tight panel and we're going to use this as our starting point. Great. Uh, after that, it's a matter of locating where we want our switches, receptacles, and lights, and we have a couple of options for boxes for that. So for our switches and receptacles, we're probably going to use a box like this. Okay. Mount it to the stud, conduit's going to come right into it, easy enough. Yep. For our lights, we'll go to the round ones. Okay. So for inside, we'll probably mount these to the ceiling, maybe the wall, depending on where we have things located in there. Uh, for the outside, easy enough, we can screw it right to the side. For inside, though, I was thinking a light like this. What do you think? I think you nailed it. That is perfect. Yeah, it's completely weatherproof. Yep. Uh, nothing's going to get damaged. There's no glass to break. It's LED. It's all self-contained. Hopefully, we don't have to touch it at all. all. Right. And it's flexible, so we can do the ceiling mount. But if you wanted, you wow. can also turn it to the side. I think that's a great authentic look. Yeah, I think it'll work great. All right. And then finally, once we have our locations, we'll install the conduit between everything. And this is what we'll use. We'll slide this into the weatherproof connectors, into the box, get everything bent. Once we're all done with that, that's kind of the rough, then we'll get ready for the finish. And the finish consists of starting to pull the wires into the conduit to the locations, put the actual fixtures up, do the switches and receptacles, and turn it on. Okay, sounds easy enough. We got a lot of work to do. It's not that easy. <laughs> Let's get to it. Let's go. We had a pretty good day here. I think we had a great day, Heath. Got all the conduit in. Yep. Got our boxes in. Yep. Got the panel mounted. Got the conduit behind there ready to come into the panel. Yep. Next step is just getting ready to pull some wires. All right. You know, I'm actually going to be back here with Richard. We got to put in a sink. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to come back that same day. That's actually a great idea. While you're yep. here, maybe in between helping Richard, you can give me a hand pulling yeah. some of the wires. We can get some stuff finished up and maybe get lucky and get some power on. That sounds great. All right. All right, Heath. See you Thank soon. you. Yeah. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hey, Richard. Say hello to my little helper. Hey, Gordo. This is Gordon, the one and only. All right. This is, looks terrific. This was really a cool project, us all working together. And look how far it's come. I know. So we've added a couple things since everybody left. The siding went up. The roof went on. Standing seam metal, love that. Couldn't go any other way. Yeah, that's right. Also, we have Heath coming back. He, he did the rough electrical, and right. now he's just got to win the wire. So. And now it comes to me. Now you need a sink. You need some cold water. Correct. All right. Did you have water before? I did, but just for the sprinkler system. And not for the chickens. Not for the chickens. All right, so we can think about putting a utility sink in. It's also nice to have a place to, you know, wash your hands or rinse your hands. Oh, definitely. Working yeah. with the chickens. All right, we're not going to give them hot water, are we? No, no, no. Just <laughs> okay. a nice cold tap. All right, so it's interesting. This is not really a true plumbing job because we're not connecting the drain back into the city sewer and have to think about all the code issues to that. Right. I just need the drain to go this way, and I need water to get safely out to here. Right. So... You got water here? I do, right in the back. All right, good. Let's start there. All right. So you've been busy, Mark. You dug a little trench here. Thank got you. The, got the trench done, knowing All right. that you were coming. All right, so here's the water from the house. This is polyethylene, often what they'll use subgrade like this. And then this is the connection right here to your irrigation. So all that goes away. That's right. So awesome. now it goes subterranean. I brought some additional polyethylene. We'll run that in this trench into the building. So water will come along here, and we'll get into the building. All right. Now, on the drain, you know, technically, we could just let it go to daylight. We just have it come out through the building, but that would splash it here on the gravel. I'd prefer to hide it, so we're going to put this. This is a catch basin that we can turn into a little dry well. Beautiful. Right? We'll put Beautiful. this right here, bury it down below grade, and then we'll run our drain into it. So you could actually start by digging this and getting it underneath. I'll run the water line back, and we'll meet inside. Hey, Mark. Heath, how you doing? Good. A little ditch digging? A little ditch digging today. <laughs> Let me know if you need anything. 
going to cut this off and make this connection right here. It's got a stainless steel clamp that I'll use a special crimp tool on. And I'm going to leave down in the box this hose connection uh, for the supply onward. But a very important point I've added is a thing called a vacuum breaker. We want to be careful that if, any if this was in a bucket or something, we could never have any back flow to contaminate the water supply. And then I'll continue on with our supply to the new coop. All right, Mark, I've set our parts and pieces up. This is a utility sink kit that comes 18 by 24, all kinds of different sizes. I thought the narrow one's fine. This is perfect. All right, has four legs that I've already attached into the bottom, and it comes as a kit. It has a lavatory faucet or a supply faucet with the locking nuts here and two supplies here. Also has leveling legs or securing legs. So once we get it in position, we'll mark the floor and we'll attach these legs and then secure it to the floor so the sink doesn't move around, okay? Now, that's the water supply. The two supplies come down here. What I've done is actually brought these together into a common T. Because since you don't have any hot water out here, if we didn't connect the hot water side, I'd e either need a cap, or every time you open up the cold water side, it might come out through the hot. Okay. And what I have done is I've added this T with a drawer off right here. So you could have an adapter onto a spout, but the spout is so lightweight construction. This will give you a really solid place to connect a hose oh, if you I, want to hose down there. I like that better. Okay. On the drain side, it okay. also comes as a kit. Right onto the bottom of it, you'll make this connection with a thing called a tailpiece. And I want to note that there's a couple of different types of gaskets. You can see this is called the top gasket. This is the one you don't want to lose because this comes up and compresses against the bottom of the basket strainer or the bottom of the sink. The rest of them, are with the regular compression nuts that come together and you bring it down together and you compress this nut to make it tight. So what we'll do is modify this for length this way and this way using this really cool tool that will cut it exactly right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is not really a, an officially licensed or permitted plumbing job because we're just going a short distance. Yeah. So I'm gonna go right into the drain. But if this utility sink had been inside the house connecting into the existing drain waste and vent system, would need to switch this to a TY of some sort and then go out through the roof. And in some jurisdictions where you can't go all the way through the roof, they might allow this mechanical vent. But we don't need it here because it's just such a short run. Right. All right, we are ready to put the parts and pieces together. All right. All right good. So you are technically the homeowner, so the rule is you always get the honor. So give that a try. The water's back on. Okay, there so might be a little air burping out because we've got to purge that line. All right, so you got cold water here. We got the additional hook for your hose right here. But a reminder, this is summer right. water. You got to drain at the end of the season and make sure you drop that trap so that it doesn't freeze, okay? I will. But otherwise, those chickens are going to be hydrated. All right, Richard, All right. they'll be. We're out of here. Gordy, ready? Very Let's excited. Go. Come on, here we go. Thank you, Gordy and Richard. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, am I glad to see you guys. How's it going? I brought, go. my, brought my dad with me. Great. We definitely need the help. Yeah. And these jams really stand out. They're beautiful. Thanks. But Thanks. Uh, you're not making it easy on me to hang doors, are you? I kind of knew that, yeah. But I know you have all the materials, and I know you're putting a slider on the rear. That's a little easier. You want to start with that? Yeah, let's get going out there. All right. Nathan, I love the heavy-duty look of these rails, man. Yeah, these things are really rugged. They're going to work perfect for what you want to do. Great. So to break it down, you have the rails. Okay. And then we have these rollers on these brackets, and these are going to get mounted to the door, and then they're just going to slide right in place. These rails are set up to go if you want to bring them over. Okay. I'll mount the brackets, and then we'll, we'll be right behind it. All right.
Beautiful. Hey, you guys are here. Hey. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. How's it going? We figured you guys could use a hand, so we came back to help throw in. Just before lunchtime, huh? Yeah, <laughs> we know how to time it. Hey, we're about to set these doors, and we're thinking about doing a pressure-treated jam on it. It's going to help a lot because this granite's all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place, across the header, too. How mm -hmm. are you going to attach them? Probably some threaded uh, wedge bolts. Some wedge oh, yeah. bolts, we'll set them right in on the high point. Yeah, well, we could also do it uh, in a threaded rod. Yeah. Put it in an epoxy, put a nut, a washer, then put the jam against it and yeah. another nut and washer on the outside, that'll give us the flexibility to plumb it up in place. I like that idea. We're definitely gonna need a lot of help plumbing this. Yeah, yeah. All right, Okay. Well, let's get started. Sounds right. good. Let's go. So well, we've got a nut and a washer on this side. Hold the nut and screw this up inside. Good. Oh. Hey, hey. Oh. hey guys. Come to check your lighting. I want to see the lighting at night, and I guess it's a good thing we turned it on, seeing you're working a little bit late. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day, but we got Mark's doors in. <laughs> they look beautiful. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. They look Mark, great. What do you think? You happy? Am I happy? I almost want to be a chicken right now. <laughs> I mean, if, they, if I could live like this, yeah. yeah. Lay golden eggs. They got it made. <laughs> if you're a chicken, I'm passing on the eggs. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, nice job, everybody. And that is a wrap for us. So until next time, when the chickens come home, I'm Kevin O'Connor for all of us on Ask This Old House. Hey, chicken boy. In you go. Hey, hey, in you hey, go. Hey, that's great, though. Yeah. Really nice. Next time on Ask This Old House, we'll invite you to Tool Lab. Over the years, dozens of manufacturers have come up with hundreds of options of drills. And between the batteries and the options on each drill, they've come a long way. Then, show you how to use a voltage tester. Hang on a second. That's energized up there? And we'll expand a backyard patio. All that on Ask This Old House.